welcome to Lakshmi's Leadership Lounge. This is all about future of work. You know, future of work is changing. And now more than ever, it's the time for us to evaluate uh, the way we lead into uh, preparing ourselves for the future, something more purposeful, okay? This is why we bring you a series that showcases a range of leaders who have inspired us by redefining the way they lead. So join me, Lakshmi Praturi, on this journey as I take a deep dive into the lives of these trailblazers and their unique take on leadership. So today, uh, it's about building communities at scale. And uh, I want to um, invite in a minute uh, Durgesh Kaushik uh, to join us. He's the head of India Market Development at SNAP, and he leads strategic partnerships, community development, and overall ecosystem initiatives uh, for SNAP. And what that means, you will find more uh, when you talk to him. He's had an amazing background of working for startups as well as large companies. and. Um, He's been a, um, a co-founder of Wish Life. He worked at Facebook. He was at Geo. So he has this amazing uh, experience uh, that we'll chat about also in a second. He has an MBA from University of California and lives in Mumbai with his family. Uh, with that, Durgesh, welcome. Thank you, Lakshmi. Hi. Must be like really excited to be here, and thanks for inviting me to be a part of this. Uh, this amazing series yeah actually i have to say that uh, we are talking about snap because uh, i was 17 year old and uh, i know that uh, uh, he's into it and his friends are into it so i want to learn more about him so i thought it's a great way to talk to you and find out more about what snap is all about uh you know you came in as the first employee of um, Snapchat in the India market in 2019. And uh, first of all, why did you choose to come to Snap? What is about its mission uh, that really aligned with you, that made you want to take this job? Thanks. Um, that's a great question. So, so I've always been passionate about like, you know, giving people the power to be their authentic selves and to express themselves. Even my previous startup that you mentioned, uh, Wishfi, uh, was really a platform for people to share their opinions on different topics, different things that are happening around them. Um, and during that time, I've been watching uh, this space very closely. And one of the things um, that really struck me about Snapchat was like, it was one of the most innovative platforms and was really focused on, you know, connecting the real friends and, and on visual communication. In addition to that, uh, you know, I saw an enormous opportunity for uh, Snapchat in India because Snap, uh, because Indians are like, you know, naturally, like, you know, they love uh, visual communication and we have a large set of friends. So we love to kind of stay in touch with like uh, a lot of our real friends. Uh, so that was the opportunity and a, and a perfect challenge for me to really take up. And I have to say, like, you know, it was one of the best decisions I've made. It's, it's really lived up to, uh, you know, my expectations and it's been a tremendous journey for me. And I think every opportunity is what you make out of it also. From that point of view, I would love to know a little bit more personally about you. You come from a very vernacular background. And I think if anyone hears you right now, um, you can tell that there was a time when you found it uh, not too comfortable to talk in English at length, perhaps. We all did. You know, I went to a Telugu medium school and till I was in, uh, you know, 10th, 11th grade, I didn't even feel comfortable talking to sentences uh, in English. So um, I just want to ask you, what has been your journey of coming from that background? So tell me a little bit about where you grew up and when did you make that switch to be completely comfortable uh, in every language? Yeah, so I was, uh, I was born in a, in a small village in Northern India, spent my first few years, years there and then we moved to Delhi. Um, because of my father's job and um, and I think like initially I did find it uncomfortable you know uh, kind of adjusting to the city life uh, but then like you know as, as a kid like you kind of you know adapt quite quickly so I was able to adapt quite quickly um, but there were still challenges you know because of the uh, cultural differences um, and I was a really curious kid uh, you know going to school meant like I was asking a lot of questions and sometimes that did irritate uh, a lot of my you know teachers 
um so yeah like you know it's, it's uh, you know asking those questions really helped me kind of learn really quickly and uh, and i was curious throughout and like you know it really helped me kind of not just learn about languages but also like you know just india in general and also technology and all the things that were coming uh, you know were happening at that time right so i got an access to internet like when i was uh, probably 17 or 18 and it it really changed my world like you know in terms of the amount of information that i had access to uh, immediately right so yeah yeah i think it's uh, it's great you brought this point up of asking questions because a lot of times in our school system we tell the kids to just follow orders and not ask questions so i think and not be shy i mean if you even if you can't uh, pronounce a word right or say something right just keep asking uh, and i think that's great because i think that's what not you know to doing that without stopping is what makes you curious for the rest of your life so uh, that's that's a really good point that i want to underline um and also want to say that you know then of course you went through all the things and you uh, did your mba and then you joined a silicon valley based uh, tech startup called infostretch um and uh, and you really kind of were part of building something from ground up yeah so tell me a little bit about how did that shape you and also tell a little bit about your move from india to us you know there are different cultural adjustments right moving from small town to big city and then big city to us so tell me a little bit about what was it about the school american culture here that you really learned and how did that translate into building a company from ground up i think uh, you know this is a great question so like uh, like uh, you know getting access to that internet like really kind of also uh, you know that was the start of me thinking about the us as well because i learned a lot about like us education and you know the kind of diversity that they have in schools in the us and i actually went to one of the top engineering schools in delhi uh, but while i was there i kind of realized that it was like the, the diversity in that school was pretty limited right uh, so you didn't really get like you know multiple perspectives plus like you know uh, teachers were really just focused on curriculum right and that is something that i learned about the us education that was different and and during my undergraduate school itself i had kind of decided that i would go to the us to uh, to you know uh, pursue further education so like i did did work in india as an engineer for a couple of years and during that time i kind of you know prepared to uh, uh to go to the us do my mba um mm-hmm. as luck would have it like as soon as i landed in the us uh, you know i learned about the financial recession the great financial recession of 2008 uh, so yeah. i did my mba during that time and uh, you know uh, you know it was kind of uh, tough to land jobs and even internships so yeah. i was fortunate to get this opportunity at this small startup in in silicon valley and i kind of consider this this opportunity or this experience as one of the most significant experiences of my life um, because uh, i worked at this very small startup where they asked me to build the marketing department from ground up while also yes. growing company's brand and business so like it was like two jobs at at one time yes. uh, so i did that and i didn't really have a lot of prior experience uh, doing that so i had to kind of learn a lot on the job and uh, it was an ambitious startup right so we really had to kind of get things going and like while building uh this big company and since it was on the peak of financial recession so it was it was a challenge to uh, to kind of you know get multiple things done uh but it really gave me the confidence like you know growing the business during those times it really gave me the confidence to face many tough challenges that i would face later in my career um and also i i kind of worked really closely with the co-founders in that company because it was such a small company and i learned a lot from them like how they went through some of the most uh, you know challenging times without like letting the rest of the organization kind of feel that same pressure which kind of kept everyone motivated and everyone kind of you know uh, focused on their goals uh, kept the you know the the ship moving and then finally i think one of the greatest things that i learned at infostretch was you know how do you build trust right with the uh, with like your customers your clients and this was again something that i learned from my ceo and one particular example i'll stop after that uh, was like you know my uh, we had these different clients where we had like you know relationships with and i remember an example where uh, you know one of the clients was kind of you know abandoning us like they were like you know we were losing that account and our ceo actually went into a meeting with their uh, you know decision makers spent an hour and he came out with like you know not just saving that client but also kind of getting commitment for more business right 
and then i kind of accompanied him in some of these meetings and what i realized was like it was really uh, his transparency and honesty like you know um, and kind of not like over promising that really helped build that trust right so whenever he kind of committed something the client really kind of listened to it and trusted the uh, you know the uh, uh, you know the commitments right so that basically helped uh, the company grow we grew like 150% uh for like two consecutive years were like amongst the top 100 company fastest growing companies in the us at that time during the peak of financial recession i think uh, this is what really contributed to uh, to their success yeah i think uh, it's very important never to give up you know and uh, and i think when you're an entrepreneur you have to have that faith that what you're doing is right and not be uh, you know um scared to say what's necessary and i think one thing i want to underline in what you said is in terms of be honest uh, and i think that always gets a client it's when you try to say things you can't do or try to promise things that can't be is when somebody gets turned off because they can see through it so i think uh, to keep customers i think honesty is the best policy um and you know building on that you know obviously that being a, a fly on the wall as companies were developing and being an integral part of that development you learn in one way and what you're doing at snap is another way uh, and you wrote an article for linkedin about <clears throat> the importance of connecting people by giving them access to internet you worked on connecting the unconnected um uh, you know for questionbox.org uh, and all that stuff so even at geo uh you are part of the youth leadership program and all these things are about first let's get the unconnected on and then we'll figure out what needs to happen so what is it about this mission um that appeal to you to your personal sensibilities i think um, you know as we grow up in india like and you would have experienced this as well that information asymmetry is, is the real problem right that is what people are getting taken advantage of and this is a problem that you know i'd been thinking about while growing up and like i mentioned when i first got access to internet it really changed the uh, you know my perspective of like you know how education can be brought to like different people and how we can play uh, you know level the playing field so i like you know start started to really believe that you know if we get people or everyone onto internet it will really kind of you know make this uh, world a more equitable place with everyone having the same a uh, level of information and also like you know their opinions will reach more people right um so this is a passion that i had and when like i was working in different technology companies i realized that everyone was talking about like connecting the existing 2 billion people at that time on the internet to their services no one was really talking about the more than one third of the world that didn't really have access to internet right um so i thought like you know it's 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 a time to like really raise awareness and like you know get people to care about the majority of the world which doesn't have access to internet so i started an initiative called connecting the unconnected which, which was really just focused on just driving the uh, the conversation like you know let's start thinking about people who are not connected and what are the benefits of you know get, getting those people online question dot uh, question box dot org uh, it it is an it, it was a project that i collaborated with roj shuman on and it was a project where we put um, these small boxes outside the kirana shops in like you know small villages where people could just come in press a button ask their question and on the other side there was a call center where the call center agents had access to internet they would just search it up and kind of you know give you the answer and this was for the people like who, whom even if you connect to internet they were not literate enough so they couldn't really you know write in their language and like you know get the results and read those those results right so we made it really uh, simple for them right so so it's like it's still a mission like you know at geo2 like you know the reason i joined geo was like you know that was the big project like bringing all of the indians on to the internet and i still believe there is there's a lot of opportunity and uh, these days like i'm really excited to see a lot of like vloggers from remote parts of india like you know creating vlogs and and you know getting subscribers and like you know really uh, showing uh, the world how they live and also kind of you know understanding about the world around them and you can see how their lives are changing just because of the fact that they have internet you know in the remote parts of himalaya now right but it's there's still a lot of opportunity uh, and like i think uh, uh, entrepreneurs in india should continue to develop uh, you know for this audience and and bring them onto the internet and then also give give them the tools to like you know express themselves and to kind of access all the information that's out there 
Yeah, you know, in uh, 2000, uh, 99, 2000 timeframe, I did a project with my then uh, business partner, Kamran Ilai, and he ran something called Schools Online. And he said a metaphor that really stuck with me, you know. So he would say that we all drive cars, but we don't know how to be mechanics, but we just know how it gets us from point A to point B. In the same way, we all don't need to be coders or programmers. We just need to know how to use it and have access to it. So the program we did was in 2000, not about teaching coding, but about just getting people on the internet and giving them access. That's it, you know. So it's really amazing that, uh, um, you know, you could see that and build on it. And actually right now, you're using that understanding of building communities, you know, to Snapchat and you've, you know, uh, you've been building a community it's grown over like i think i don't know 150 percent or something in the past year um and it started with really building a community of lens creators and um, so tell me a little bit about the phenomenal numbers you have here in terms of uh, just you know i think indian creators are making over i think 6000 ar lens uh, AR experiences uh, as of last November. So tell me about how did you build this community and how large is this community? So I think like, you know, uh, one of the key focuses for us when we kind of, you know, started to, uh, you know, grow the Indian community in general was to make Snapchat feel like really local, like it's made for the Indians themselves. And, uh, you know, amongst many other things, you know, localizing the application, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, celebrating the different cultural moments one of the important things is also to kind of you know give people the local creative tools uh, which um, mostly are kind of you know powered by uh, the augmented reality that we offer and uh, you know one of the ways to like really scale that was to grow the local AR, AR community and we have built this tool called lens studio which, al which allows people to build their own AR experiences on own lenses uh, so we took that as a as a as a uh, you know as a central you know place to kind of you know educate people on creating augmented reality. We collaborated with different high schools and colleges and kind of educated the students on, on augmented reality. We also uh, conducted a few lensathons. Lensathons are basically like lens making hackathons, uh, which kind of, you know, helped us also kind of train and like help uh, encourage more people to, you know, learn AR, you know, on Snapchat. So this, this now resulted in like, you know, uh, people creating a lot of local experiences for our community at large, right? So that was the real purpose. Uh, like like you mentioned, we have like 6,000 uh, lenses being created by uh, by our lens creators every month. We also have a couple of lens creators who are, whose lenses have been seen by like billions of people, right? So the feeling of like creating for the world is like really, uh, really important for these creators, right? So, so overall, I think, uh, you know, uh, globally, we have like, you know, 600,000 uh, lenses that have been created by uh, by these lens creators. So we will continue to kind of, you know, really democratize AR, uh, you know, by letting people create their own experiences. And that is really, uh, really the goal here. Yeah. Can you give me an example of something that an uh, Indian kid did that became very popular or just an example of something? Yeah. So we, we have a, an official lens creator called Vivek. Uh, he created a, a a beauty effect called smoke flare and it went super viral uh, with like you know billions of views and um, and now he's getting a lot of requests uh, from people to uh, to create different variations of it he actually just created it for his friends like his friends had some uh, you know requests uh, based on you know uh, what they were seeing on snapchat and they just wanted him to build something so he built something for them but suddenly like you know our community across the world uh, started using it and and it became super popular right so that is one example and i just want to say that i think this kind of an exposure is really great for them because people could reach out to them and commission them to build their own lenses or whatever so it's getting your footprint out there your talent out there uh, in a very unique way so i think it's something quite interesting uh, you guys have built um, I have one last question before we move to the next section is that um, there's a very interesting behavior in Snapchat and I want you to talk about it a little bit because most of social media is about I put something out there and everybody watches it my entire group watches it or the whole world watches it but I've learned so much from you about what Snapchat is about is really about one-on-one -on -one, 
so tell me a little bit about the snaps and streaks and some other things and what insight do you have about young people with these uh, you know features that you have so i think uh, you know the way uh, you know snapchat uh, you know really focuses uh, on on like you know bringing different experiences to people is to really reinvent the camera right so we really focused on reinventing the camera because it gives you the uh, the ability to like you know uh, uh, you know self express and uh, gives you the ability to like you know um, kind of live in the moment and celebrate like you know uh, your friendships in a very different way right so the focus is really ca- on connecting uh, real friends and having them kind of live in the moment right whereas like a lot of other platforms really focus on you know or, or like you know really focus on presenting like your perfect self so this is not the case in the ca- in, in case of snapchat right you can be your authentic self uh, you know communicate with your uh, with your friends uh, you know on a regular basis and uh, and really kind of uh, you know not worry about judgment right so that's the most important part right so all the different features that we have are really focused on like you know how we have been reinvented the camera Mm-hmm. Uh, to help people kind of you know be their authentic selves so now we are in a section where uh, you get to ask me questions in the stump me if you can so what questions do you have for me sure i, I think uh, one of the questions that i would ask you is like um, what do you wish uh, the 21 year old lakshmi knew um you know that's about the time i came to america uh so there are two things maybe you know both on the personal and professional uh side i just i wish i knew that whatever felt the most important at that time won't matter you know uh whatever i mean the, the heartbreaks you have or the personal relationships you have or the crushes you have uh, feel like oh my god i can't live without this person or whatever on that as well as this is the job i want this is the school i want to get to none of them actually matter um and uh, you know my father always used to tell me that you know about marriage like he would say it doesn't matter whether you love and marry or marry and love the real work is after you say i do you know uh, and that's when the real work is so i realized i realize now even for a job whether you have a startup or a big company or it doesn't matter where the real work is the time you put into making it good and i just say to everybody don't worry about the perfect job whatever job you have in your hand do it so well that the company can't live without you and do it so well that you train someone else so that you can go to the next thing so i just wish i knew at that time the amount of angst i had about silliest things i can't even remember now uh you know uh, felt like that was the end of the world uh, uh, you know so now it's like i mean whoever i had crush on i can't even remember their names but at that time it felt like oh my god this person doesn't respond to me like my life has ended or i remember wanting a particular job wanting to get into a particular school and i couldn't afford to go there and i was so upset but i realized that i went to a state university i went to portland state university but i made the most of it and i had the most brilliant teachers most amazing campus so i think it's what you make out of whatever you're given i wish i knew that so that it would have saved me a bunch of angst uh, angst in life i think <laughs> well i think uh, related to that i think uh, one of the questions is uh, you know now you're like you know m- probably much older, much older right now what is the uh, what is that surprises you about the current gen-, gen z right and what is the most fascinating uh, thing that you've learned about you know this generation you know one of the things uh, is that first of all uh, with even you know the way you are uh, durgesh i'm just amazed by how less hierarchical things are i, I mean it, like when i approached you it was not like you were you were like i will only talk to ceo of some other company at officer you know like you we just connected because we connected uh through a common friend kritika and we respect that as opposed to status symbols or you know uh, hierarchy so i really really love that about i think egalitarianism that i tasted at intel uh you know when i was in the silicon valley where i didn't realize that 
that's not how the whole world was. I think that was that's how the whole world was. But I see that in India, the younger generation, the uh, confidence of being who you are, whoever you are. I mean, I love it. Let people show up for work with, you know, vibhuti or bindi or, uh, you know, hat, whatever they want. And I love it that you're expressing who you are and you're good at it. And the other thing about the current generation that I love is that there is really no attachment to things more and more, you know, um, whether owning a home or owning a car or owning things, uh, I don't know, maybe owning things a little bit more, uh, but uh, it's, it's a very, very new world where everything is being redefined. So I feel like I'm a kid in a candy shop. That's why I like interacting with you. I like interacting with my son and his friends because people younger than me are teaching me so much every day that keeps me young. So that's what I love about everything. You know, it's like Gen X, Y, Z, whatever the next thing is, I'll still hang out with them because they're like my best teachers. As the teacher, it's the, it's the same with me as well. My co-founder yeah. of the previous company was like, more than 12 years younger to me. So yeah, love yeah. out with them. Yeah, yeah. So um, do you have any other questions or shall we? I think uh, that's, that are all the questions I had. Yeah. Great. So um, one thing we always do toward the end of the session uh, is we have a thing called Ink Tree Seed because what happens is that I have these great interviews with people. We have wonderful insights and then we don't see each other afterwards. So I'd like to take something out of it that can keep us connected afterwards because we both are about building communities. So tell me, what is something you can do? We have a program called Ink Youth Leaders Program we are launching now where we are going to high schools to teach kids about mathematics and design thinking and leadership and all that stuff. And you have an amazing, uh, you know, talent pool and also um, in the trainings you do to young people, for young people. And we have a great community. So is there something we can do to uh, educate people, even of my generation, as well as high schools, about how can they be more proficient uh, online? That's a great thought, uh, Lakshmi. I think we should... Uh... Like, you know, like I mentioned in the earlier part of the conversation as well, one of our missions is to uh, democratize AR. And I think we would love to collaborate with Inc. Uh, to uh, to really kind of, you know, educate uh, these young students and all, also like different generations that exist within your community to uh, to build their own AR experiences. So we'd love to offer like regular workshops on Lens Studio and teach people how to create their first uh, AR lenses. I think that's great because I think some, you know, learning these things, maybe for some of the parents will teach us better to be maybe more cool to our kids. <laughs> and also uh, it'll be wonderful, especially for our youth program that we have, if we can do a focused training session for them. So they learn how to do these things and, you know, be part of the uh, SNAP community that will expand their uh, uh, connections also. So thank you so much. That's really wonderful. Uh, and with that, I'd like to wrap up today. Durgesh, big thanks to you and thanks to my uh, our combined teams that have helped us uh, bring this together. And thanks to all our audience for uh, staying with us and watching this. And hopefully we'll put this on YouTube, pass it on to all your friends. And with that, I want to wrap up by saying that uh, the one thing I take away from this conversation is about the power of uh, placing tools in the community's hands. Uh, so Turkish, the biggest thing I learned is when you place the lens creation in people's hands, they have done things that 500 programmers you hired couldn't have done. You know, It's really the power of placing the tool uh, in people's hands. So that's really wonderful. And the other thing I, I want to uh, say is that it gave me a new insight uh, into how our next generation wants to 
communicate to each other. They are building their relationships in their own way. While I may complain that you're not calling me enough or writing to me enough or whatever, they are connecting with people they care about in their own way through their own creative expression, etc. And that's really, really wonderful to know it's time we changed instead of asking our kids to change. So uh, thank you so much for giving all these insights, Durgesh. We'll be in touch with you to arrange that workshop for our community. That'd be really wonderful. Thank you so much. That's a great gift. Thanks, Lakshmi, and thanks to the teams and everyone who's watching. Um, yeah. Hope to kind of you know stay connected. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>